Hey, it's me again, Angela from the App Brewery. Welcome to another Swift deep dive. And in this deep dive, we're going to talk about immutability. More specifically, what does it mean when we say that a struct is immutable? Let's quickly recap some key concepts. When we create a struct in our code, we're essentially creating a blueprint for an eventual object that will get created from our blueprint. And in this blueprint, we get to plan ahead for how this eventual object will be. For example, we create variables such as our question number. And when our variables live inside a struct, that variable is associated with our struct and it's known as a property of that struct. Similarly, we've created functions inside our structs. And when functions are created inside a struct, they're known as a method. So you can consider these properties as a way of defining what this eventual object created from the struct will be like. So its attributes or its properties. And the methods can be thought of as what the object can do. So when we created our quiz brain struct, we were essentially creating the blueprint for the eventual quiz brain that would get created. And we can take our blueprint and initialize it, which turns it into the actual object. Now we come on to the topic of immutability. Swift was designed so that the objects that get created from our struct blueprint are immutable. But what does that mean? If you wanted to change a property of the object that gets created from the struct, well, you can't just change that block from green to yellow. Well, you actually have to destroy the entire object and create a new one from scratch in order to change its property, say this block from green to yellow. So the way that I think about immutability when it comes to structs is imagine if you created a sculpture from stone, right? If you created Michelangelo's David and you decided that it should have a larger nose, well, you can't just come along and chip away at the stone because the nose is already too small. What you actually have to do is to completely destroy the sculpture and carve a new one with this gigantic, ugly looking nose. So in order to change the properties of a struct, you have to destroy the old copy and create a new copy that encompasses that change. Well, the good news is that you as the programmer don't actually have to write the code to make this happen. Destroying old structs and creating new updated structs happens under the hood with Swift. This is built into how the language works. So remember when my other hero, Keanu Reeves, moved into my town? Well, I certainly remember. But the question you might be asking is that, well, if structs are immutable and cannot change, well, how can Keanu Reeves become a citizen of my town? Well, the answer is that under the hood, the old my town gets destroyed and a new town with Keanu Reeves gets created and replaces the old one in its place. Now, at this point, you might ask, well, how does that impact me? The code looks the same. Well, in this case, it does. But sometimes we have to explicitly tell Swift when we need a new struct to be built from scratch. So suppose that we wanted to create a function inside our town struct that allows us to change the resources. So suppose that in our town, we also had a method called harvest rice. And in this case, what happens is we add some rice to our resources, right? So this is a property of our town, which is a dictionary that has a string as a key and an integer as the value of the amount of resources we have. So when we harvest rice, what actually happens behind the scenes is we tap into our resources, we go ahead and reach in and look for the rice resource, and then we set it to equal 100 bags. But in this case, because we have this harvest rice method, which changes a property of our struct, namely the resources property, well then, when this method runs, Swift will need to know that it has to rebuild this entire structure from scratch. So 
What we have to do is less with no by adding the mutating keyword in front of this method. And then our errors will go away. So now we can say my town dot harvest rice and then we can go ahead and print my town dot resources and you can see that when this code runs that in addition to having some wool to begin with we've also got a bunch of rice now yay food and the only thing we had to do is that if we're making a method that modifies one of the properties from within the struct then we have to mark that method as mutating 